Hello, it's Victoria from Coastal Themes, and in this video we're going to be diving a bit deeper into SEO on Framer and showing you some small things you can do to make sure that your site ranks better on Google and other search engines. So I'm going to start by explaining the three different types of SEO that you should be aware of. The first one is technical SEO. This is kind of everything that happens under the hood of your site. So by default, Framer has a really nice SEO setting. So if you did nothing and you just made a Framer website from scratch, put in some maybe basic kind of headings and body text and so on, your Framer your frame website should rank pretty well and should have a pretty high SEO score if you run it through Google. And then the next type of SEO that we see is on-page SEO. So on-page SEO is how your page is structured. So like what I just said, you have headings and you might be familiar with different heading styles. So you'll have H1, H2, H3, all the way down to H6. And this just shows different priority headings. And then you have body text and you also have link tags and all these other tags that all determine and tell Google how your pages are structured. And this is on-page SEO and this goes hand in hand with things like keywords, making sure that the words that you use in your copy on your website are words that are ranking on Google. So if there's a popular keyword agency for strategic decision making and Google has a nice keyword ranking for agency for strategic decision making. You want to make sure that you're not only using it in headings, but you're using it in your body text. And these keywords are smartly woven in throughout your site to make sure that you're tapping into all these little loopholes on Google. And then finally, we have off page SEO, which is basically everything that happens away from your site so people that link back to your site and this is where if you're creating quality content people will be more inclined to link to your content or post it on social media anywhere that your site can be linked to any pages on your site can be linked to from elsewhere on the internet again contributes to google being able to crawl your site better and see it that it is a reputable site on the internet so those are the three different categories, technical SEO, on-page SEO, and off-page SEO. So in this video, while we can't cover everything to do with SEO because it is a big rabbit hole we could go down for hours and hours, I'm going to show you a few things that build on our last video of basic and beginner SEO on your Framer site. So the first thing we're going to look at is orphan pages. And orphan pages are pages on your site which have no internal links directing to them. So think about a assets page of logos, which you used to have linked in your footer navigation, but now is no longer there and no longer linkable from any other page. So this means on my homepage, on my about page, on my case study page, my contact page, 404 privacy terms, anywhere, I have no links, not even links in a drop down navigation linking to this assets page that I once had. And that is an orphan page. These are pages that when Google crawls your site, so crawling is what happens when Google, when you submit your Google to Google console or just happens when Google crawls, it goes through your site and goes through all the different links to find all the pages. And crawling is what happens when Google doesn't look at your sitemap. So your sitemap might have that assets page, technically, behind the scenes. Your assets page exists, but when Google crawls going through all the links on your site, that sitemap is not found. And Google likes to penalize pages that have too many orphan pages. So it is important that when you have pages, they are linkable throughout your site. So that is just something to keep in mind when building your site and making sure you, if you have a lot of pages, if there's a lot of stuff going on in your frame of site, that everything is linkable from somewhere. 
it doesn't have to be the, the header navigation, it might be the footer navigation, it might be from another page. They just should all be linkable. The next thing you want to prioritize for good SEO practice is having a responsive, mobile responsive site. So Frame is really great at this because you can just add your breakpoints using this plus button. So you can see here we have four breakpoints. We have large desktop, desktop, tablet, and phone. And the trick is when you're creating responsive sites, it's really easy to just create new assets and hide the assets which were used on desktop. So if this image, if I didn't want to use this image on mobile, I could just hide it, make the visibility zero, and replace it with another image. But what you really should be doing is optimizing your content for responsive design. So this means not hiding any content across your breakpoints, but rather making them responsive. So this is why if you click onto headings and you go into your heading styles, go into the setting, we'll click on edit on H1. You can see these are my standard H1 settings, but then underneath you have breakpoints and you can set different font sizes, letter spacing, rhyme spacing, everything, all your same settings for different breakpoints so that your H1 text will be optimized across desktop, tablet, and mobile. And you don't need to be hiding text or showing text. Everything is the same text layer, basically. The next thing that you can do, which doesn't actually happen on frame at all, is submit your site to Google Console. So this means going in to create a Google account. And I'm going to show you how to do this really quickly so you know where Google Console lives and how to begin the process of submitting your site to Google Console. So I have come to Google Console from Google. <laughs> I've typed in Google Console and the URL is search.google.com. And you can see it prompts you to start now. So we're going to click that. And I already have a website here, but I'm going to add a new website. So when you add a new website, it will prompt you to add the domain, which is all the URLs across all the domains. And then it will also prompt you to add a URLs under a specific address, which is your URL prefix. So this basically means including your URL with the HTTPS. And this usually means including the URL without the HTTPS. This requires you to verify your domain in your domain registrar DNS settings, which we can dive into in another video if you're interested in DNS settings and how that works. This one requires you to just put some code into your website. So you can see I've pasted the link with the HTTPS and we're going to hit continue. So now you can see I have to verify the ownership of the site. I can do this by downloading an HTML file and adding it to the website, or I can use an HTML tag, or if I have Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager set up, I can do this too. There also is an option to add a DNS record to link it. I'm going to use the HTML tag because I can show you how to do this on Framer. So open this. And you can see, copy the meta tag below and paste it into your site's homepage, and it will go into the header section before the body section. So let's copy this and we'll jump back into Framer. And we are going to click on these three dots here. And if you keep going, you can see we have a section called custom code and we have start of head tag and end of head tag. So if we just jump back, we can see that it doesn't specify where in the head tag they should go. So it is really important to note that custom code is only available if you are on a paid Framer plan and Framer plans start at around four pounds a month for the basic Framer plan. So you are able to do this at a very low cost to make sure that you are linking your site to Google Console. So that being said, I'm going to paste that code in 
hit save at the top here. And then I'm going to republish my site. And my website's been updated, so I'm going to head back to Google Console. And verify the link. There you go. So I put that HTML tag in my head tag, the top of the head tag, and the ownership was verified. So now we can go to the property. And you can see the property here has changed to my Framer website. And it does take a while for all your info to come through. So what has happened, I have basically, in essence, submitted my site to Google to be crawled. Your pages will be indexed here and then sitemaps you need to submit yourself. So you can see my URL here, but if I go into a new URL, you can always access your sitemap because this is something that Framer automatically sets up. So you go to your URL and add a slash sitemap.xml and you can see all your pages are linked here and I can see every single page below. So I'm going to add sitemap.xml and submit. Sitemap submitted successfully and soon enough that will all be, you can see here, the pages have been discovered and this contributes again to Google, Google ranking and so on. There's a few other things that happen in Google Console. We can definitely dive into this in another video if that is something you're interested in. So I'm back in Framer. One of the last things I want to show you, just because we love to keep things short, we love to keep things quick, and we can definitely do another video on SEO if you like this one, is when you have your pages specifically in your CMS, to make sure that your slugs are short. So you can see this slug here, your slug is basically the everything that happens below on the slash. So my blog is my URL slash blog. And then this blog post is be more, your, be more yourself, six signs you need a boost of vitamin B6. We can definitely shorten this. So we could just say be more yourself or signs you need more vitamin B6. Really just getting to the point. And you can see here, it gives you an alert Editing the URL can break external links. So if anyone on other pages, on other sites have linked back to this, this means that their URL will no longer work because there won't be a redirect and it will be, and this will be the correct link going forward. So if I publish this, I can open the link and add slash blog slash signs. You need more vitamin B6, that should take us to our blog post. Yes, perfect. So that's just shortening your URLs, basically shortening your slugs. Something great to keep in mind, especially if you have very long blog post titles and we have a few here. So we could definitely optimize these and shorten them down. So Google likes them a little bit more. And then I'm going to give you one more bonus tip. So in the previous video, we did cover how you add your meta tags. So we went into blog, we clicked on these three dots and we clicked on settings. And you can see here, we don't actually have a page description set for my individual blog posts. So you can use an excerpt if you have one, but you might wanna make, create a special meta tag description in your CMS to link to in your page description for your individual blog posts. So if you wanted to use excerpt, you would simply do two open curly brackets and you can see your CMS variables are listed below. I can see excerpt is here. So you simply just type excerpt or whatever your CMS variable is called and you close your curly brackets. Oh, accept, accept, there we go. So that will now just display my excerpt in my page description and that is what Google will see. But if you want to be a little smart, we'll discard this, we'll head back to our 
CMS, we're in our blog section. We are going to click the three dots at the top here, edit the fields, and we are going to add a new field called plain text, and we'll call it meta description. And I can't type today. And if you have any employees working for you or is for a client, you might want to write the description that gets submitted to Google or something like that. Make it required. We won't do a placeholder and that's all good. So then when we click away from this and we scroll down, you can see our blog post is here. Oh, there we go. Meta description sits here. So we've got SEO image and a meta description. Then you can begin typing whatever you'd like. So this is my description. And I will save that. Head back here, click my three dots, settings. And now meta description is now a CMS variable, which I can curly brackets into my page description. And I can hit save, and that is what will show until the end of time, which is fantastic. So that's just a little workaround if you wanted to have specific meta descriptions for your CMS pages. And that is it today. I'm going to stop there because we've gone through a lot. We've looked at technical SEO, how that happens behind the scenes. We've looked at on-page SEO, so using h1 to h6 tags and body tags and linking in keywords in your copy. We've gone through off-page SEO and how that works and how external linking works. And we've also looked at submitting sites to Google Console, sitemaps. So, so many things going on. SEO really is a world of itself. And I hope this video has given you more of an insight into how to rank your frame of site higher on Google and how to begin getting into this all and <laughs> understanding it. So if you have any questions, please drop them below. If you like this video, please let us know and what you want to see next. As for this theme, this beautiful theme that you're looking at, this is a Newport theme. This is a theme that we have designed and we are selling on Framer as a Framer theme. So I will link that below and you can shop all our Framer themes. And yeah, that's it from me today. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.